So this game went exactly how I predicted. The uh, offenses on both sides, for the most part, struggled throughout the game, and the defenses shined, which is typical for a game one. And it came down to a last second field goal, just like I predicted, 13 to 10, but not for Nebraska. So let's get into this game and see if it was as bad as it looks and figure out the good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's get into this. Thompson giving ground. Here comes the pressure. He gets away from Holmes. Finds his way to the outside. McLaughlin turns him around. He sets and throws, and this ball is caught. Now, if you remember in my prediction, I talked about and stated how this game is going to be a defensive battle. Minnesota's been one of the top defenses in the country, not just in the Big Ten. For the last two or three years I know of, um, they were like tied for sixth, I believe, last year in scoring defense in uh, F the FBS. And you got to give them credit for how they played. And I will say this. The quarterback for Minnesota, McCallum McManus, looked really good, a lot better than I thought he would in the first game. And I, I really believe if you look at this game, it's not as bad as it looks. I actually went back to this game, went back through play-by-play, play, and Nebraska, it, it wasn't the same. I, I kind of felt like it probably everybody else – uh, at the end of that game, I felt like, here we go again. Fourth quarter lead, we blew it. Same old, same old. But Matt Rule was right. This is not the same scenario. If you go through this game, and like I did, go through play by play, you got to tip your hat to Minnesota and what they did. Now, don't get me wrong. Yes, the penalties popped up. It seemed like they popped up at the wrong time. You had the face mask on a critical down. You had a couple of false starts down by the goal line, one by the tight end and another one by the left guard, both that really cost you. And McManus, the quarterback from Minnesota, you could tell is a lot more poised and a lot more ahead of where Jeff Sims is. I see... I see there needs to be a lot more improvement when it comes to Jeff Sims and his decision making. He eyeballed a lot of the receivers, uh, didn't look off, didn't go through his reads, and I, I feel like towards the end of that game, I think Minnesota caught on to that, and that last pick was a result of it. I really kind of wish they, with the clock running down like they would, uh, went a little more to the run or maybe the option read during that time or took a page out of Minnesota's book and did some dink and dunks. I didn't understand that, that we never got Kemp really into the game. We never w took what was in front of us. Uh, Sims kept trying to go downfield, and I've noticed that's not his strong strength. Is, is strong strength there. That would have been something I think Casey Thompson could have done well. And that was another reason when I thought it was going to be a quarterback battle, I thought Casey Thompson could win this game. He's not the same runner, but he's a lot more polished passer. And we kind of needed that during that game. Don't get me wrong, Jeff Sims did, a, did some good things. He ran extremely well. But some of the passes were just not there, so, and a lot of his reads. Minnesota did a great job of backing them up, uh, put, coming with pressure when they needed, and then backing them, putting everybody in zone and taking away the passing lanes for Sims, and especially when he would eyeball a receiver, and then that you would see Minnesota fire to the ball. The one thing, if you watch that, watch that game over again and just watch their defense, how they swarm to the ball. A lot of times when I thought, wow, this offensive line looks the same, looks pretty bad, when I went back through it, 
they didn't look as bad as I thought. You saw Minnesota firing to the ball, and it came them linebackers and even the safeties at times fire to the ball, hit the holes, and would uh, hit the back, and it would look like the line collapsed. Same with the passing when some of them sacks. And don't get me wrong, I saw Cochran got beat on two plays, two silly plays, really bad, and, and not even by the same player, one by number 97, the other one by number 17. Just feel like, and I've always said this, that Cochran is probably more comfortable at guard than at tackle, and he's been kind of thrown in tackle the last couple of years because Pradowski can't stay healthy, and we kind of really need him. I, I really think we would benefit having him, but then how well is he going to do because he really hasn't um, had many starts in the last couple of years. So even if he came back healthy, would he even win that job? But for overall, I thought the line did decent. Uh, yes, there's still improvement there. Penalties popped up at times, but you didn't see as many as what we've seen in the past. And the one thing I did notice that I was really glad to see was the tackling was really good. Crisp tackling, fire to the ball. Hartzog did a great job at that. I saw Omar, they picked on Omar Brown a lot, um, gave up some plays. Kept giving a little too much room, I thought, but he made some good plays. He made that great interception down there. So overall, it wasn't the result we wanted, but I agree with Matt Rule. You could see, mainly for a first game, and just like he said, seven penalties, four turnovers, a couple of them in crucial red zone territory, and yet it still took a last second walk-off field goal for Minnesota to win that game. A well-coached nine-win Minnesota team. And I got a feeling Minnesota is going to be better because I was pretty impressed. They have some receivers. If you watched that drive, and I'm sure you did, they made some plays. Jackson, even the one before the touchdown, the, the, the play before that, that to me could have easily – let's put it this way. If they would have called that a touchdown – and did that review, it would have stayed a touchdown. It was that close. And it was just an outstanding play. And another one was the play for the touchdown was that move. He put a move on Hartzog and got turned around. And I don't know why Hartzog does it. He's still young. Remember, he's just a true sophomore. But you watch this play right here, and you could see they're in zone here. So you that means you've got all your help on the inside. And... So that means you don't get beat on the outside. And what's he do? He falls for that. He wants to make a play. And he falls for that move, takes this lane inside, and Jackson cuts back to the outside, is wide open, and then makes an outstanding play. This Minnesota team's got some wide receivers, and they're going to be a record with the problem with them. They do have a very tough schedule this year, but they're probably going to be better than I thought and probably better than most people think. I think they're probably still going to finish third or fourth uh, in the division just because of that schedule they play, but they're going to surprise some teams. And I understand in my season prediction, everybody might be talking about, um, I predicted them Nebraska to beat Minnesota and Nebraska to end up 9-3. and three. But if you see here, I, I did say there's four games, and Minnesota was one of them, depending how the game goes, injuries, how uh, if we still see these penalties we've been seeing or the turnovers we used to see, then these games could easily go the other way. And I even said, so depending how these four games go, I could see Nebraska finishing anywhere from five and seven and being fifth in their uh, division in the West, uh, all the way up to nine and three and finishing second or third in the division. But obviously that's not going to happen right now. Right now, Minnesota, we can see that right now. Minnesota did pull that one out. Turnovers. Turnovers really killed us. And like I said, penalties. So just like I said, if we kind of start, we get them same penalties and them turnovers like we've been seeing, then I could easily see Minnesota winning and I could easily see some of these others winning. And then when we get to them other games in yellow there, uh, depending on injuries and, and things like that 
could easily go the other way, and this one went the other way. If you remember my prediction, I predicted this to be a defensive battle, would go down to the last second, and I said Nebraska would probably kick a last second field goal and win 13 to 10. So I had the score right on. I definitely got what I was telling y'all, take, if you're a betting person, take uh, Nebraska plus the seven and a half points and definitely take the under. Uh, I had it uh, 44 points when I got there, so I ended up getting an under 44. I could almost, I could have took under 25 and still won this game because I predicted 13 to 10. I got to remember even last year, 20 was the most. So I just didn't see a lot of scoring in this game, especially how good these defenses were. I thought Matt Rule and Tony Weiss defense were really looking good in practice and all that. I didn't think that was a fluke, and I thought they're going to probably shine in, especially when uh, Minnesota hasn't seen it that much. And we already knew Minnesota had a great defense, and they've had one for the last two or three years, and that's what's going to keep them in these games this year. This year. If that quarterback can do what he's doing, he looks so poised. He looked so good, mainly on that final drive, and he just dinked and dunked us to death uh, to the back, to the tight end, just some curl routes, some out routes. And I thought Satterfield should have took that uh, took that page out of their playbook uh, if you were going to do any, if you were going to do any kind of passing like that uh, on that final drive, but, and not try to get so much because. Sims tried to grab a bunch of yards there, and he didn't need to. And Newbin, who's a top-notch, who's definitely an NFL player, that safety for Minnesota, Newbin, outstanding player. They have some players on that defense. So if you guys, I know you probably don't want to because I know I didn't want to, and that's the reason why I don't jump on and give a live post-game uh, review, review like you see a lot of these other channels because your your emotions are flowing and I uh, trust me I don't handle losing very well. Um, uh, matter of fact, I handle it really bad, and so I'm not a nice person. I don't I don't handle things well when they lose, and maybe it's because I was used to back then when they didn't lose that much. But I don't remember being that bad. Maybe it's just because I'm getting old and sort of grumpy old men come in. So I knew I had to take a day to kind of think this through and then go back and as much as I didn't want to go back and watch this game, watch this game play by play. And I really didn't see anything that stuck out to me that um, was really, but there, there, there's minor thing, I, things that are definitely fixable. The only thing I worry about is Sims because he was already known for turning the ball over and we kept hearing, oh, he, he's taking care of that. But now he's in a live game, and I don't know what it is, the pressure of the game. Um, Casey Thompson handled the uh, stay, staying in the pocket a lot better than Sims did. Sims seems to panic like he needs to get out. He, he eyeballs his receiver. He doesn't go through his progression. It's almost like he's waiting for the one receiver he knows and hoping they turn so he can get rid of the ball because he knows he don't have much time. I really don't know. I'm speculating. Um, I wasn't too fond of the play call about 12 minutes left when they punted the ball. Uh, Nebraska's defense was shining at the time. We just scored. We stopped them on a three and out. They punted to us, and then Rule takes three, or Satterfield takes three passing shots, uh, and we ended up having to punt it back. I didn't mind taking the one shot where um, he underthrew Tommy Hill, and he needed to throw that ball he needs to throw that ball to the point where it's overthrown or only Tommy Hill could uh, run, uh, run under that and catch it. He almost even got that pick because it was so badly underthrown. And you even see Tommy Hill slinging his finger going, you need you need to put it out there. And I didn't mind that one. And even the second one, he was open. But I, I would I, I would have wished they would have went then back maybe to the zone read or uh, back to the run on second down because we were doing pretty decent at that time uh, running the ball. And especially, I think a lot of it had to do with, especially because of Sims, they had to keep an eye on Sims. Um, but hindsight's twenty twenty, and obviously if, if, if it would have worked or even the one to Kemp on the second down play would have worked, I wouldn't be saying that. So 
Um, I'll let them do the coaching, but I, I would have liked to seen that better. Another thing I would have liked to seen, which did work out on the third down play, but down there when they scored their t- last touchdown, when Minnesota right before they scored on third down, where they when everybody backed up in the zone and and Gifford almost picked that ball up. It hit him right in the hands, and that game would have been over if he'd done that. So the play worked in. But they also did the exact same thing on fourth down. But if you remember, Minnesota took a timeout. I think that's what P.J. was looking at, going, hey, if we do this, this is what we're going to do. And it worked. I thought on that fourth down they should have came after him because it was actually fourth and ten. They did it earlier in the game when they actually had a third and ten, and they came after him. And it, what happens is, they don't have much time. The receivers don't have time to get the whole 10 yards before he has to get rid of the ball, and it was incomplete, and that's what happened on third down. They needed 10 yards. If you'd have came after him, and unless the line just did an outstanding job and picked everybody up on the blitz, he wouldn't have had much time to make a decision, throw it, and he would have had to probably do it again, throw the ball early before the receiver gets to where he needs to go or ends up catching it short and then fourth down would have been over. That would have been it. And Nebraska would have been taken over around the five yard line. But again, um, it's everybody's first game. It's Satterfield's first game, Coach Rule's first game, um, a new scheme's first game. So overall, I can't be too disappointed. Yes, I'm disappointed in the loss. And this was definitely a winnable game. And yes, this was definitely a game they gave away. But Rule is definitely right. The one thing I, I think you guys ought to look at, and I don't know if Rule's looked at, but if you look at the clock, because they are in Minnesota, when they were driving and the clock got down to around 40 seconds, the clock's running, they ran a run play, clock's running from 45 to 40. The clock actually stops in the middle of it for about four or five seconds and then continues on, and no one caught that. The clock operator stole about four or five seconds uh, during that game. If you if you have it on tape, you got it on DVR, go back and look at it with about 45 seconds uh, in the game when Minnesota's driving on that run play up the middle where they stop them where the clock's supposed to be running because it was a run play up the middle. Uh, no one called timeout or anything. You'll see the clock once it hits 40 stop for about four or five seconds and then start back up on its own. And it I kind of noticed it looked like the, to me personally, I think it looked like the clock operator being there in Minnesota was trying to buy a few more seconds for his team who was still at that time driving to win the game. So that, that was interesting when I saw that when I was going through these plays. But I overall, I think we did okay. Let's get some of this cleaned up. I, I really hope that Sims can uh, grow from this. But I'm really concerned about how much Sims is going to be. He's he's not a freshman. He's a junior now. He's got, what, 23, 24 Power 5 starts under his belt. And he acted more more of a rookie than McManus did over there in Minnesota. I was really impressed with that quarterback. And I kind of agree with P.J. Fleck because P.J. Fleck's made the remark that they've never had a quarterback be drafted in the NFL, and this one can definitely, you know, he could definitely be the first. And after watching him in his first game there, starting on a defense, he was, you know, and trust me, the Huskers got after him. And if you noticed, if you watched some of the plays, they got after him with three or four uh, linemen coming after him. I was really impressed how the defense played overall. The secondary played all. Yes, they made a few mistakes. Yes, Hartsall had a, 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 a bad play, but no one's perfect. It's it's a team win and it's a team loss. So just give kudos to Minnesota. Um, that off, Their offense played better than I thought, but I think the defense, the Huskers' defense, is better than we think. Because I'm telling you, that, that Minnesota offense, you're going to be surprised. If, if this is a sign of what we're going to see, they have the receivers. And, yes, they didn't run like they normally do, but that's because their strength this year is in that quarterback and then wide receivers. They got some playmakers, and not just one. That Jackson and that Chrome, that Croom, is that his name? Croom. There's some playmakers, and some of them plays they made. You just had to tip your hat 
I know at the time you don't want to. I know I didn't want to. Again, yes, it's it's heartbreaking, and I think a lot of us took it hard and see it, oh, my God, here we go again because of what we've been going through the last three or four years, all these one-score losses. If it wasn't for that, we probably wouldn't be thinking that as much. So, again, congratulations, Minnesota. Yes, we're 0 and one I still think we could still uh, go 7-5 and five this year, but we got a lot to clean up. I think a lot of that can be cleaned up. But just give Minnesota kudos for even knocking the ball out at Anthony Grant. I understand people complaining about why he's in there. You said he fumbled a lot. That was a great defensive play. He just didn't drop the ball. Yes, you need to wrap up. You need to get both arms around him. But Minnesota, they made the plays when they need to make the plays on both defense and offense. Because with four minutes left, Nebraska had a seven-point lead. Uh, I will be putting out my prediction after uh, probably uh, middle of the week uh, for the Colorado game. I definitely want to watch the Colorado TCU game tomorrow, kind of get a feel of how Dion and his team is. Um, but Nebraska's got a lot to clean up, and we can't be having these penalties uh, at crucial times that we've seen and definitely cannot have these interceptions and turnovers, um, especially down in the red zone, or you're going to get beat by everyone. You're going to, the old saying goes, you know, it's usually the one that wins the turnover battle that wins the game. So got to get that cleaned up for game two, but you usually do your most improvement between game and one, game two. So until then, go Big Red.